Hello everyone, I've just added a fog buster setup to my Avid CNC router for helping me cut aluminum. And in this video, what I wanna cover is what a fog buster is, what are some of the benefits for use when cutting aluminum, and then also just kind of give you an overview of my system and how everything is connected and operated. So let's first start with what a fog buster really is. So this blue thing right here that says fog buster, that's the fog buster. It's mounted onto the Z axis. Um, I'll get into the mounting a little bit later, uh, but they have kind of like this nice little adjustment. And basically what this is, is it's a way to spray lubricant and or coolant directly at the cutting surface or the end mill. You've got this um, rigid brass tube that goes into this little metal body and you have two hoses that come off of it. One is for air and one is for the actual coolant. And what happens is on the other side off camera, there is a tank that holds your coolant. Compressed air runs into that tank, pressurizes the tank, and then you have compressed air that goes into one of these and then the coolant that goes into the other. And with this little needle valve, you can control how much coolant comes out of the nozzle. The interesting thing about a fog buster is it doesn't give you like a mist. It doesn't atomize um, the coolant at all. It doesn't um, have a fog or a mist, which is hence the name fog buster. It just kind of like spits or sputters or sprays the coolant directly at the end mill. And instead of something like a flood coolant that has a ton of coolant that comes out of it, this is more the airflow and actually just a little bit of spitting that will kind of almost instantly evaporate at the end mill. That is what gives you your cooling is the air and then blowing away the chips and then just lightly spraying the end of the end mill. So let's turn this on and I'll show you what it looks like in action. So I've got a um, clean shop towel here just to kind of show you the spray pattern. I'm going to start with this in the off position so there'll be no coolant coming out of this and I'm just going to kind of adjust it more there. And I do have this controlled in Mach 4 so I'm going to hit the button and turn this on. There we go. So this is on and you can kind of hear that is the airflow that comes out of this. It's Really not a lot. I want to say that this is maybe only about 15 PSI. There's a pretty small hole at the end of this, so it really doesn't take much airflow. And now if I just turn this little valve, we can start to get a little bit of coolant coming out. Now, ideally this would be pressed right against the nozzle or right against the end mill, but we can turn this up and you can see that we can get a decent amount out of it. And if we really turn it on, you can pretty quickly soak this shop towel. Just turn it down. But the nice thing is we can just see there's just a little bit of a spray. So yeah, it gives you an idea. It's just a little bit of coolant that comes out, not a whole lot. And one of the nice advantages to this is it's very easy to clean up. If I was using flood coolant on something like this, it ends up being just a real pain because your chips get really wet. Um, you need some kind of evacuation through the channels in your table. There's just a whole thing with it. And with me using this dust collection, I'm still gonna keep this um, dust shoe on here. I can actually just suck up the chips normally because they're really not soaked or wet. By the time they go up through the hose, they're completely dry. This basically evaporates almost as soon as it hits the end mill. So that's one of the nice benefits about it is just that little bit of an air blast gets the chips away from what you're cutting and then a little bit of coolant just cools down the end mill, um, which means that you're not heating up the end mill and you're also not heating up the part that you're cutting. So I found it's pretty ideal for cutting aluminum. So now that we have a little bit better idea of how this works, let's take a look at the whole system. So let's start at the beginning at the compressed air. So this is where I make things a little bit more complicated than they need to be. On this side of the shop, I don't have an airdrop and my compressor is a relatively small one. I very easily could have gotten a much larger compressor that could have handled my Tormach and everything else, but I decided to try something a little bit different. This is a two-stage airbrush compressor. As you can see, it's um, relatively small, compact little package. It has a tank, it has a little um, compressor up here, and I've done a couple little modifications up on top that I'll explain here in a bit. 
but it is kind of your own, you know, self-contained little air compressor. It's relatively quiet. I think it can get up to about 50 PSI, which is more than we need. And it's kind of made to run a little bit more continuous than a standard compressor is. So the idea behind something like this is because I only need about 15 PSI worth of air, I decided to go with an airbrush compressor that is basically dedicated to this machine. These are about eh, 100 bucks or so. So for me, it was um, easier to just go ahead and do that than dealing with the um, running an airline and having a bigger compressor and all that. And basically all I'm doing is I've got a power strip that plugs directly into the bottom of the controller. I've got the two fans um, on top that I've added, and then I have the compressor itself. I'm not sure exactly what the duty cycle of these is rated for, but I noticed that after about a half an hour worth of running, it would start to get relatively warm. I think upwards of about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a pretty substantial um, temperature rise in running this just straight out continuous. So what I did is I 3D printed these little um, pieces right here and added two large 120 millimeter fans onto the top that keep the heads of the compressor nice and cool. And now I'm only seeing about maybe a 20 degree rise over ambience, which is really nice. So this whole thing is meant to run 24 seven. It can run the entirety of the cut. And since everything is just controlled by this one power strip that's plugged into the controller, you just hit the button in Mach 4, all of this turns on, and you get your air out of this. Now this air comes out and then it goes into a solenoid that is attached to the machine, and then that goes over to the tank. Now the reason that this goes to a solenoid is because this tank holds a pretty substantial amount of air, and at 15 PSI and the amount of CFM that the actual fog buster has, the tank does slowly, gradually build up pressure. So if you were to just cut the power to this whole system, this takes about 30 seconds or so just to kind of leak out slowly. So I wanted a solenoid that just cuts that off instantly. From here, everything is pretty straightforward. It's basically just plumbing at this point. The solenoid sits right down here on this rail, kind of on the inside. That connects into the hose, which goes through the cable track that is on the gantry and up to the coolant reservoir. It splits off back here so that you have one hose going in, the other hose goes out. So that is the compressed air for the fog buster head. The rest goes inside into the tank. Then you have the other hose that goes out. This is the water siphon that goes into the tank. So that is your water. So now you have those two hoses that go down underneath through the cable track, up down through the cable track in the head and then over to the fog buster. So everything is completely integrated into all the cable tracks on the machine. They go through this whole thing and I was actually worried that there'd be a little bit of an issue with um, such long runs because you know some of these are like 10, 15 feet long once you go through all of this and it actually works out pretty fine. And the coolant reservoir is right here. Now, the reason that the reservoir is here and not you know, somewhere else underneath the machine is because that this needs to be at relatively the same height you know, in the Z axis as the actual cutting head or the fog buster itself. If you have it too high, it kind of siphons back down into this. And if you have it too low, it'll just sit there and leak out because, you know, it's lower. So it'll just kind of drain out into it. So you generally want it at about the same height. So mounting it right here was the obvious choice for that. For clamping the actual fog buster head on the mill, I'm just using one of these open channels. And I think these things are called like, handle wrenches or something like that, but I'm just using one of these that I found in um, one of my parts bins into a T-slot nut, and that just holds the whole thing. And there is still, you know, a little bit of adjustability, so I can kind of move this thing around a little bit and get it positioned. I might end up having to do something different because that's going to probably rattle around. So I can probably do a grommet or something, but you know, this is just phase one kind of testing out and see how it works. But there is plenty of room up here for the adjustment. I can just loosen this, slide up and down. I have some adjustment there and there. So it is pretty easy to get it right where I need it to be. So I guess the only thing left to do in this video is to show it doing its thing. So here I'm just cutting some aluminum and you're going to have to trust me that it is on and operating efficiently and doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's not really a good way to kind of AB this, you know, on and off. It really just kind of makes the cuts better 
And what I've found is that with the Fog Buster, the longer the cuts you do, the greater the benefit is. So if you're doing really big uh, passes or really big um, pockets or something like that that are really deep and you're removing a lot of material, that's where this thing really shines. If you don't have the air blast, you tend to have the chips build up and you have to somehow vacuum them out or something like that. And you also end up recutting chips. And then just the longer cuts, you're gonna end up heating up not only the end mill and the workpiece as well. So those are the kinds of the reasons why you would wanna use it. So it's really hard to show that on video, but be sure I will be using this in future videos and kinda of, you know, give you some ideas of what it is doing. I do have a future video coming up where I will be using a really interesting tool, um, a Datron end mill that I'm gonna be using for facing. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, so yeah, this concludes the Fogbuster video. If you're looking to do aluminum on your Avid CNC router, I definitely recommend getting a Fogbuster. It really does help with cutting aluminum. So as always, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and see you in the next video.